Okay, let's start the chapter six. In this chapter, I want to introduce the two big application of ALD for the silicon industry. And then as you expect that, I will introduce the high K, uh, the material deposited by the ALD, and then double patterning process. So while well, um, the ALD uh, was developed almost like 40 years ago, and then that was at the time explained in the first chapter, uh, the second chapter explained that um, the, the first application of ALD was electroluminescence devices, but the, the ALD has really high the conformality and then very nice the thickness controllability. So the silicon industry are very interested in the ALD system and then the many the different application ALD which uh, ALD can be uh, contribute to develop the new uh, the electronic system. So this is the uh, uh, the cross section of uh, electronic uh, integrated circuit system. So transistor, interconnect, and then interlayer dielectric. So we can use the many things. First of all, high K material that is the gate dielectric, and then gain metal to deposit that and plug and the diffusion barrier and a capping layer and a double pattern. So as you expect, as I expect, explain in this, uh, the second chapter, so the, all of the structure uh, of the silicon device is now evolving from two dimensional to three dimensional to make the conformal film that is changing to be very challenging because the previous, well, the structure is changing to the three, three dimensional and then the previous deposition method like spot ring and then CVD doesn't do not have like a extremely high conformality. So ALD is now uh, adopting to a lot of the different type of uh, uh, application system. So uh, well, we will take a look at the high K material. Uh, well, typically for the the gate dielectric and. So first of all, we take a look at what is the uh, the high K material, and then um, basically the transistor is is operated based on the MOS structure, metal oxide, and then the semiconductor system structure MOSFET, and then so the charge is built up right bef right below the metal gate, and then the uh, two pre bands direct conduction from the electron to the metal gates, we typically use the very thin insulator. So we call that, that is the gate dielectric. So, so this is the structure. Like for example, you can just think about it. This is a gate and then this is a channel. And we have the dielectric here. So, but as you already have uh, the background about the electronics and then this capacitance can be defined by C is defined by A, the area of capacitor, uh, over T, the thickness of the capacitor. And then, so if that material is the dielectric, so we can define by epsilon for the di dielectric permittivity. So dielectric permittivity is composed of the vacuum permittivity and then relative permittivity. So the epsilon naught and an epsilon R so, but sometimes we can use the copper, kappa, uh, instead of the epsilon R, and then it looks similar to the K in the alphabet. So we use like high K, high uh, relative permittivity material. So if you have the high electric permittivity, so if you apply the electric field, there are many, like many charges can be built up here. So if you have like a many charge here, so we can increase the uh, the current level of the transistor and then we can decrease the voltage and an operation voltage. So if the K is very high, epsilon R, the K is increased, capacitance is increased, and the amount of charge in the dielectric is increased. That is a very important, like for example, in the very small size devices so we have to increase 
the current level and then we have to decrease operating voltage so all of the transistor want to use the uh, high k material so well there are three different uh the main application of the dielectric in the silicon uh, device industry first of all gate dielectric for the transistor and then capacitor dielectric for the DRAM technology and then blocking oxide for the NAND. So, well, the most of the people are very confused of what is, well, I mean, so I heard about the high K material, but that is, that is not applied for like a NAND and that is not applied for like uh, the DRAM structure. So probably the most of the people heard about the gate dielectric, only gate dielectric, which is, used for the logic device, transistor of the logic device. So transistor of logic device is composed of the source drain gate. And this is a gate dielectric. So we uh, have to save a lot of the charge here, right below the gate -like dielectric. And then for the DRAM technology, we have electrode here, and then DRAM dielectric, capacitor dielectric, and then we have to save a lot of charge here to memorize a lot of the data in the DRAM. And then this is the structure of the flash memory and source drain gate. And we have the uh, tunneling oxide here. Electron is here and then going tunnel into this floating gate, silicon nitride. And then this is the blocking oxide to control this charge. So, well, the dielectric are same, but the purpose for the three different applications are different with each other. So first dielectric in the silicon industry is the silicon oxide because they use like, silicon substrate and the silicon oxide is naturally formed on the silicon surface. And then this is the, well, fortunately, the quality of the silicon oxide was pretty good and a very strong adhesion to the silicon and then very high melting point, very stable, thermally stable, chemically stable, and then high electrical breakdown, armor pores, not crystallized, that is the very important to block the leakage current, and then high density, and an electrical uh, insulator, uh, high electrical insulator, and a stable interface with silicon because that was the transform from the silicon to the silicon oxide. And then passivate well silicon surface and an effective diffusion and etching mask. But this advantage is dielect, uh, dielectric thickness variation and then penetration on impurity, probably like dopant from the silicon substrate, reliability and a lifetime prob problem, and then gate leakage current, uh, uh, current increase. Like for example, so this is like, for example, this is a silicon and then silicon oxide and then this is a metal gate, so we applied a lot of voltage and then we have to save charge only here. But if you increase the voltage and then this thickness is too thin, this electron is directly going to this metal gate, that is the tunneling current. So I will talk about it in the later. So the limitation of the silicon oxide is this is a capacitance. The thickness is decreased and then area is increased to increase the capacity, like capacitance, and then or K is increased. So, but, well, uh, to increase the capacitance, we have to decrease the thickness of the dielectric layer, but decrease by decreasing the thickness of the dielectric layer, electron is very easily penetrated into the gate side. So, and then we have very limited the lateral size. We cannot increase, we cannot increase the A to increase the capacitance. So we cannot decrease thickness. We cannot increase uh, the lateral size of the capacitance. We have to only, we have only one option. The K should be increased. So high K material requires then high, uh, like higher uh, than the K of like K value of the silicon oxide. So uh, the higher dielectric constant. So there are some one important concept. So if silicon oxide capacitance, uh, the value is the C silicon oxide, and then 
silicon uh, the capacitance of the high k material is the same so we can set this equation and then we can remove this and then we can remove also this and then the thickness ratio of high k material and a silicon oxide and then k value ratio high k and silicon oxide so the silicon oxide thickness can be defined by this and then we call this this is the eot value equivalent oxide thickness because high k maintaining k value is important but we have to consider we have to carefully consider the thickness of the dielectric material because the thickness is very important to prevent like the leakage current so if a high k layer uh, has the 39 k value and then the silicon k value is the 3.9 like the 10 times higher than silicon oxide so the silicon oxide thickness is one nanometer same k value high k material they can make the 10 nanometer because the k value is 10 times larger than silicon oxide this is the uh, the one important purpose why we have to find the high k material to prevent the gate uh, gate leakage so this is the silicon oxide and then this is the hafnium oxide so the hafnium oxide is the first ald material adopted for uh, the silicon industry is almost the 2007 so this is the the important region for that so the another region is uh the band gap so silicon band gap has 1.1 and then if we have the dielectric layer right underneath the silicon right top of the silicon and then they have like a larger the energy band gap because that is the dielectric material and then this is the conduction band and valence band so if the band offset should be high because the electron in this conduction band or valence band or probably hole here may be jumped on to this conduction band if the band's band offset is not very large so so we have to take uh consider this the band offset so this is a silicon and a silicon oxide is looks like that but the uh some the K, high k material has very small band offset compared to silicon the conduction band that should be very uh important factor so how we can select the high k material dielectric constant and an energy band again so this is the ideal high k material high k value high larger energy band again but the all of the material looks like this curve so we have to find the good value well probably half the oxide is good like it's over around like the 30 and then the energy band gap is pretty large but silicon oxide energy band gap is pretty good but the k value is very small well titanium oxide k value is good but energy band gap is very low because of that the titanium oxide has a really high leakage so different strategy so we uh the capacitance equation again so for the logic device to increase the capacitance is the gallic dielectric we have to increase the k k value so dram technology to increase the capacitance is the capacitor dielectric we have to increase the k and also we have to increase the uh, area because the cell can be made like a very three-dimensional structure we can increase the a to save the more charge and then this is the uh, three-dimensional NAND flash memory to increase the capacitance in the blocking oxide. Also, we have to increase the K value and then uh, increase the area. So the increase of area is not only allowed in the logic device transistor. So uh, the important uh, importance of ALD for the high K material because, well, for example, DRAM technology, we have to coat very complicated three-dimensional structure. It looks like a very complicated using a very good nice method to make the conformal film. So the ALD should be used for that. And excellent film quality and the very highly dense and low leakage current is pretty the important thing. 
and then easy tuning of the filling composition. Sometimes we have to put other dopants or other material to improve our filling quality. The ALD is pretty good. So as I explained in the zinc, nitrogen of the zinc oxide, so we can easily put the, some, uh, some elements into the ALD filling just by changing the ALD process scheme, the process sequence. So there are some uh, three, in, uh, three common the high K material for the each application. So capacitor dielectric like DRAM technology, silicon oxide is pretty good because the dielectric constant is pretty good and leakage current is 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 very low. And then uh, blocking oxide for nanotube flash memory, aluminum oxide is pretty good. The band gap is very high. Band offset is almost zero to the silicon oxide. Low leakage current. And the half new oxide, gate dielectric, the, the K cup is, K value is pretty high. And then slightly larger dielectric constant. And then the band, band gap is pretty like acceptable level. So various, the kind of the precursor for the aluminum oxide, half new oxide, and the zirconium oxide. So this is a TMA, well, alkyl oxide, alkylamide. So this is the most common the precursor for the metal ox high K metal oxide. Well, some t recently the a lot of the researcher used the really extremely high K value. They utilize the perovskite based high K material. So STO BST strontium titanium oxide. Uh, so uh, barium strontium titanium oxide. So B uh, STO and then B BTO and then uh, BST, like so that has really high, extremely high K value, like a 300, almost a 2000, almost a 6000. This is the really extremely high K value. We can increase the thickness. So uh, to make the LD perovskite film, but the challenging is they have the perovskite material has the ternary material system, not the binary like a very simple the uh, metal oxide that is not very simple metal oxide system so the other challenging is we have to make uh the right crystal structure to obtain the the high really high k, uh like high k value so the typical prostate temperature should be very very high and then so the temperature should be very high to maintain uh, the crystal structure. So the temperature should be very high and then low crystallinity, lower dielectric constants, we have to keep the crystal structure. And then there is the really big challenge. The another, the very interesting material, ALD beryllium oxide. And then as I explained, this curve, this is the K value and an energy band gap. Beryllium oxide is here. It looks like a really ideal material. So the Dr. Song Eun Kim from the KIST, they are very actively working on this beryllium oxide material. And then he reported very interesting material system, uh, like the gross saturation and then very pretty, the good high K value and a large enough the energy band gap. Okay, let's move on to the double patching process. Well, probably the, all of the people already know what is the lithography. So lithography means we have register layer and we, we block some the light exposure uh, using the mask. And then some register layer uh, exposed to this uh, light source. And then this register layer is changed to some other material system by interaction with the light source. And then so we have this and then we use the developing development solution we selectively remove this and we make the uh, uh, some pattern PR pattern on the substrate and we just cut it out this just by using uh, the uh, etching process and then so this is the uh, this everything about the lithography and then the etching process so but as I explained uh, before, so we have a lot of the limitation, uh, which is the related to 
the wavelengths of the light source. So first of all, we have to um expl uh, well so we have what we have to use the light source to change the photo uh photo register, and then this is the lens, and then light comes in, and then we just focus on here, and then. So numerical aperture, that is the angle of the incidence of the most oblique ray allows to the optics. So the numerical aperture uh, can be defined by n times the sine theta, that is the this angle, n is the index of refraction. So numerical if the numerical aperture is increased, that means we can increase like this angle. So we can focus on very very narrow area so that is the ability of the lens so this is the uh, the another concept so the resolution so there are some two different uh spot this is the fully resolved but this is a uh, little bit difficult but still resolved because they have some uh, uh distance difference but this is the unresolved so there are some criterion to distinguish two different spots. There is the ray light criterion. The resolution is limited by the diffraction because the, this is the light source. For the telescope, uh, this minimum distance between two different spots can be defined by this. So from this equation, we can define by minimum feature size using specific wavelengths light so minimum feature size can be defined by uh, k1 lambda over na numerical aperture so minimum feature size me means how we can what is the minimum so size we can make using this uh, wavelength light source so if the wavelength light source is increased so uh, the minimum feature size is increased that means the longer wavelength we cannot make the very tiny sample. So this is the uh, minimum feature size. So we have to decrease the minimum feature size. So how we can do that? The reduced K1 or increasing numerical aperture, reduced K1, increasing numerical aperture, or uh, 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 reduced lambda, this reduced K1, and then uh, reduced lambda, and then increase the numerical aperture. So K1, well, we can use a lot of like a trick of axis illumination, phase trend shifting, something like that. And then increasing numerical aperture, we can put some, uh, the higher, uh, higher re n value, refractive like index value. Well, sometimes we put some, our pattern into the water or some reduced lambda. So this is the most easiest way. So. Because of that, the, a lot of the retherapy, the company, they trying to use the shorter wavelength light source. So we have, this is a visible light, and then down to the UV, deep UV is getting close to the X-ray region. So, but the shorter wavelengths, so the so most ex, uh, effective, but the development of the proper lens system. We don't have the proper lens system to focus of our light source into very small spot and then there is no PL material which is working in very the tiny the area so the breakthrough is the patterning technology so the second breakthrough of ALD process is patterning technology so double patterning process so the PL code it first and then we make the PL pattern using the photolithography we deposit very conform film like silicon oxide using the ALD and then etch out top and bottom so we only have like a spacer mandrel and then this is the PL can be easily removable just by using DP in the acetone and we have this pattern this is the pattern so just by using this pattern as a etching mask we just transfer our pattern down to the bottom layer so remove this mandrel we can make it so interesting point is the pattern is def defined by the thickness of the silicon oxide layer so uh, well in the previously the pattern is defined by the wavelengths but now 
the pattern is defined by thickness of the PAL silicon oxide film. So this is the uh, silicon oxide, PR silicon oxide. It's very conformal. But as you know, the PR is the organic material. So we have to use the low temperature ALD. So that means we have to use the reactive counter reactant. We use the oxygen plasma to deposit the silicon oxide film. So below like 50 degrees C. So this is the requirement for the PLD silicon oxide. Thickness very high thickness uniformity, density uniformity, very conformal, film density and then strength. Because that is used for the etching mask, this strength should be very high. And a growth rate and a low temperature process. This is the requirement for low temperature PLD process. So uh, we can repeat this the double patterning process. We typically call the quadruple patterning process. So this is the double patterning process. We make the mandrel, silicon oxide mandrel, and we deposit another material on here. Etch out top and bottom, and remove the silicon oxide, and then transfer this uh, pattern in bottom, and then we just remove it. So we can make the higher density of the mandrel pattern. So we can easily control the density and then distance between two different patterns easily controlled by the ALD. So this is the another the breakthrough of the ALD. So um, the requirement for the second spacer, well, definitely they have to have this one, but we don't need to have low temperature process because there is no PL pattern in the second, the layer deposition process. But important thing is etching selectivity between the first and second spacer. So, uh, well, first spacer is silicon oxide. Well, definitely we cannot use the silicon oxide because other material should be used for that during, uh, like, these, the second spacer should be stable in the first spacer etching process. So typically, the many researchers trying to do that, but they use silicon of titanium oxide. This is pretty good. And if you doffed into, doff silicon into the titanium oxide, you can make a very nice etching selectivity just by putting some small amount of silicon. So this is a nice conformal.